is the Dell and Spiron 5548 any good? So let's find out. What's up guys, I'm Suman from Phonesteen and this is my review of the Dell and Spiron 5548. So let's start off with the design and build of the laptop. It is a pretty lightweight laptop considering it's not an ultrabook. The top has an aluminium finish to it with a brushed look which makes it look like a distant relative to the HTC family. Jokes apart, the bottom has a single plastic cover covering the base which is actually removable. This means you can upgrade the RAM and storage. Even though Dell site does not mention about any upgrades, it is actually possible. And taking a look at the I.O. Towards the left you have the power input, a USB 2.0 port and a HD HC slot. Towards the right there is an Ethernet port, a HDMI port and two USB 3.0 ports and a headphone jack. And opening the laptop you are greeted with a stealth black look. The screen has decent sized bezels with a rough matte finish with the Dell logo towards the bottom of the display. The 5548 has a full size keyboard with backlighting which can be adjusted and the chiclet style keys are well laid out with perfect travel. They are not too close to each other or far apart. There is even a full number keypad which is actually useful. But one gripe about the keyboard is that it flexes a lot but over the time you'll definitely get used to it cause considering the price and talking about the price the Dell 5548 is around 50,000 rupees in India and abroad it is approximately around 600 to 700 dollars so this makes it one of the most affordable mid high end laptops so what about the display how's it it's just okay because it's a TN panel with a resolution of 1366 into 768 making this an okay-ish display because come on HD in the time of 4k that too with the TN display so this is totally unbearable but the viewing angles are even poor but there is no backlight bleeding so this display can definitely handle 4k videos with ease even though this is just a bullshit display. But about the display, there's a HD webcam with a poor megapixel count. But at least it's a wide angle cam with a HD resolution, not a potato cam. Guess you know who it is. So the build is decent. But what about the performance? So let's talk about the specs first. This boy comes with a 5th generation Intel i5 processor. 8 gigs of RAM which is upgradable, a 1 TB hard disk and an AMD R7 M265 2 gigs DDR3 graphic card. So the specs look great but don't be fooled. This laptop can definitely handle the most of the task thrown at it with ease. With the 5th generation i5 processors, tasks can be handled with ease and the 8 gigs of RAM in it is handy when it comes to multitasking. You can watch 4K videos without any issues and browsing is actually a pleasure with the inclusion of the 802.11 AC Wi-Fi. It comes with Windows 8.1 preloaded but the bloatware from Dell is irritating as it keeps popping up unnecessarily and even each time you boot up the device. In case you're thinking about Windows 10 update. I've still not received it. But how does it perform? So let's start off with the most common thing that people at this category aim for and that's gaming. So with the MD R7 M265, this actually sucks. But don't get me wrong, the laptop is great. But for gaming, it sucks. So when I compared it with my friend's laptop having the same specs but with an Nvidia graphic card this laptop is a total loser cause it can run all games but the frame rates are too poor choppy due to the AMD card in it. 
it's not powerful enough to handle these high-end titles as you can see like how I'm suffering now. Optimization is the only word that is missing in the AMD card. Hope AMD provides us with updates to minimize these top optimization issues but like titles like Sleeping Dogs, Prince of Persia is well handled. But never ever expect Alienware kind gaming but for productivity you want to get a laptop. Never consider this laptop cause software is like Adobe Premiere Pro Photoshop suffer in this cause. These softwares uh, use the CUDA cores of the NVIDIA cards more efficiently than that of the MD card screen processors. And when you take a look at these softwares and the cards supported, only very few desktop grade MD cards are supported whereas these mobile AMD cards are not at all in the list. So you can definitely edit videos and photos smoothly on the NVIDIA counterparts but whereas in this you definitely can't. So for business how is this? It can easily handle tasks thrown at it with ease like MS Office softwares and with its lightweight it is definitely portable to take for presentations and to your workplace. So I've told a lot about this but how does it handle heat when under load? To my surprise it definitely lets off less heat and due to the fifth generation processors based on the Maxwell technology this consumes less heat. So while using it you will definitely not feel uncomfortable at least for some time. So I've criticized this boy here a lot but what is my conclusion? For the price this laptop is an absolute beast but if you own a high-end PC or a laptop you will definitely be disappointed. You can definitely game in this but if you don't mind choppy frame rates for high-end titles then this laptop is definitely a deal breaker. But one note, I will never recommend this for editing cause I'm suffering with it right now. Anyways, this is a great package for the price you pay. And I'll include a few Nvidia based counterparts for the same price below if you want a better gaming experience in a mid high range laptop. So thank you for watching and this is Suman signing off once again, peace.